Hey everybody, it's me, your old pal Dan Classic, and we're back at it again with another episode. This week, it's time for even more Gumby. We did three Gumby episodes last year. And there's a lot more Gumby stuff to look at. Besides, I think people liked the Gumby episode. <laughs> well, except one guy. They didn't say they didn't like the video. They just made a request. And at least they said please. That's true, but it's too fucking bad that I have no fucking plan to fulfill their fucking request. Shit, yeah. You goddamn right. This is the Dan Classic Show, and this week it's even more goddamn Gumby. Raz Holly, hit the motherfucking music! Way back in the first few episodes of last season, we took a look at Gumby. From his humble beginnings to superstardom, to the fade to anonymity, and back to stardom cementing Gumby as a pop culture icon to this day. We took a look at the Gumby collectibles from the beginning with Lakeside all the way up to today's NJ Croce Gumby figures that can still be found at retail. With Gumby merchandise being made consistently for decades, I certainly don't have it all, or even know about every single Gumby collectible available. And even with my relatively small collection, I couldn't cover everything in the first three videos. Not to mention that I'm always on the lookout for Gumby stuff, so new items get added to the collection all the time. This time we'll be taking a look at some of the lakeside stuff I didn't have or couldn't get around to last time. A classic Ben Cooper Halloween costume and even more lakeside non-Gumby Garby. Let's start off with some more lakeside stuff. Lakeside Toys, later Leisure Dynamics, was eventually purchased by Hasbro and sort of lost to time. What people might not know is how influential Lakeside Toys was to the industry and how much stuff that was originally Lakeside is still around to this day. Besides Gumby, Lakeside Toys was the company responsible for Barrel of Monkeys, Tub Town, Harbor Village, Big Wheel predecessor The Cheetah, as well as other old favorites. While companies like Hasbro and Mattel have huge followings, and even defunct toy outfits like Ideal, and in the case of Mego, have been reborn as part of today's collector craze, Lakeside doesn't even garner a Wikipedia page, making the one-time heavy hitter a lost footnote in toy history. Through collecting Gumby, I've been reminded and even discovered more of what Lakeside was producing up until being absorbed by Hasbro. I have a little bit more Lakeside Gumby stuff, and some Lakeside stuff that's not Gumby. When the hell else am I going to get to talk about it but right now? So let's check it out. Alright, and from 1968, it's not Gumby, it's Popeye! Um, we saw Popeye in the uh, in the Bendy Mania episode before, but he was kind of beat out. This one is in fantastic shape. Holy shit, look at this Popeye. Um, as you can see on the back here, uh, it says 1968 King Features Syndication or Syndicate Inc. Uh, manufactured for Lakeside uh, made in Hong Kong. And this is a Lakeside Bendy, a Super Flex. Um, from the 1960s, and for a figure in the 1960s that I bought loose, um, not bad at all. He's Popeye, he's Bendy, 
Um, and, and he looks great. They uh, they, they kind of pull a Lennard on you. Um, they don't finish the paint job on the back. There's a little white splotch on there for God knows why. Um, isn't it nice? Could we uh, finish the cape? Um, finish the hat? Finish fucking Popeye, for Christ's sake. But anyway, um, they, would, they would make Popeye for years, and NJ Croce still makes a Popeye figure. Um, and you can buy them pretty much the same place that you can buy Gumby. Uh, but anyway, that's Popeye from Lakeside. Okay, and remember when I said that Lakeside was the, uh, you know, the original creator of Barrel of Monkeys? Well, um, they went back to the well on this one with Spider-Man Hero Heads game. Um, ages three and up. Really? Like, this stuff's gotta be really tiny because inside Spider-Man's head, um, is little Spider-Man, uh, Barrel of Monkeys men. Um, and I, I keep the, I'm keeping this closed because I'm actually going to give it to a friend of mine um, and, and they're going to open it up, hopefully. Hopefully he'll open it up um, and, and he'll see it here in, uh, in the next couple of weeks um, and, and we'll get to see it open. But let's take a look at the back here. Uh, one, spread out all the Spider-Mens. Use the ring on the, the hero. It's fucking Barrel of Monkeys. I'm not going to sit here and read all the things, but look at this. There was Disney ones. There was uh, other Marvel ones. Back when Marvel, like DC always had the logos. Marvel had the heads. Uh, Marvel had more heads. Um, and, and then you try to link the guys together. Um, this thing, you, you hook it to the top of the Spider-Man head because um, there's a little... little uh, little eyelet, little eyelet there, and you use Spider-Man's head to pick up all the Spider-Men's, or as many as you can, um, and, and that's, you know, it's the same way. It's basically, it's Barrel of Monkeys, um, but it's sort of a, a smaller, shrunken down version in a Spider-Man theme, and it's only by Lakeside Toys. Right, so let's go back to the 1960s. Um, again, 1965 Lakeside Industries Inc. We have Gumby and Pokey hand puppets. Um, these are the my Gumby's in better shape than my Pokey. Pokey's got some rips and tears, but again, they're from the 1960s. They were, you know, they were bought loose. Um, somebody, whoever had these back in the day. Um, man, they, they really like these. They, there's lots of, lots of love uh, given to these things. Um, and it's cool. It's cool that you can see that somebody had, had a good time with these old guys back in the day, uh, playing Gumby and Pokey Puppets. Um, we can see here, right here on the little tag, um, there he is, Gumby. The logo right there, 1965 Lakeside Toys, a division of Lakeside Inc., Minneapolis, Minnesota, made in Japan, back at the beginning of uh, manufacturing in Japan, uh, later on we would see uh, the, the the Jeep that that they would create. We saw in the in the other Gumby episodes. Uh, these are the puppets. I missed them last time. I've had them the whole time. I forgot to add these in here. Um, I, I've been trying to figure out what I want to do with these because they're they're difficult to display because they don't you can't really stand them up. Um, I mean, I guess I could put them onto sticks or or something like that. But these these old uh, these old fabric shirt things that they have on them. They haven't really held up very well, so uh, I, you know, I'm, I guess I can just kind of keep them how they are, uh, keep them preserved, I guess, but this isn't a fucking museum. I'd like to figure out a, a good way to uh, display these and to show them off uh, because they are cool. I do like these heads. They're good sculpts. They're really neat, and they're like oversized in comparison to the figures. But that is Gumby and Pokey uh, hand puppets. Okay, and so for anyone that was upset that I didn't open up that stupid Spider-Man thing from the 80s, here is another Superflex by Lakeside, Walt Disney's Donald Duck um, from 1968, Lakeside Industries, Inc., Minneapolis, Minnesota. He sits, he stands, he bends, and twists into thousands of funny positions. This is 53 years young in my hand a carded unpunched figure 
from 1968, uh, this Donald Duck figure. Um, apparently someone was trying to sell him for a dollar 19 at some point. I don't know when they were trying to sell him for a dollar 19, um, cause and he's certainly worth a little bit more now, um, but he's about to be worth a little bit less because I'm about to open up this figure. But first, let's punch out that punch hole. Here we go. Oh, it tore. I, I tore it. Wait. Oh, no. Oh, it's, it's falling apart in my hands. There, there. I finally got the, the hole punched out. <laughs> open it up. Open your fucking toys. And there he is. There he is. It's, oh my God, from 1968. For the first time since, since the fucking, the 20th century, touched by human hands. Um, was the last time was probably when he was put on that card. Maybe, maybe even a, just a machine put it on there. So maybe it's never been touched by human hands before. And mine is the first to touch it. It's fucking Donald Duck. And he looks kind of dirty for some reason. Um, the the bubble was a little cracked. Um, so, you know, bacteria or mold and shit could have got in there. But it looks like he's pretty mold free. Um, he does have a, a, a weird pink smudge on the back of the head. I do believe it's from the packaging. Oh, wow. Look at this. Ew. Okay. Well, that's, that's no good. Well, you know what? I'm going to be careful with this fucking thing. Is it... It's like it's just melting in my fucking hands. <laughs> but he's still bendy. Look at this. He's brand new. He's bendy. And he's all mine, baby. It's from 1968. Lakeside Zone. Donald Duck. And look at what we have here. Finally. Finally. I, I searched. I, I, I strove. I, I went from place to place. I looked high and low. To find a lakeside Gumby from 1965 on the card. This one's unpunched. I have I worked for a long time trying to find this goddamn thing. I saw one pop up and I was edged out by a dollar on an eBay auction, um, which actually made me literally depressed. I was literally depressed, um, but I did not lose hope. I did not lose hope. I knew that one day, one day I would be able to get my own, my own Lakeside Gumby on the card. And guess what Dan Classic does to carded figures? He opens them up, but I'm not gonna open it yet. First, before I open this up, I'm gonna, I'm gonna saving it. It's like the finale of the episode. So before I open this up and we get to see what a fucking Lakeside Gumby from 1965 looks like on the inside, I am going to show you, or we're gonna talk a little bit about the, uh, the, the Ben Cooper Gumby costume from a long time ago. Let's take a look at that. Okay, and speaking of things I'll never get around to talking about otherwise, we're going to take a look at a Ben Cooper Gumby Halloween costume. If you didn't already know, Ben Cooper Inc. was one of the largest manufacturers of Halloween costumes in the U.S. from the 1930s to the 1980s. Anyone who grew up in that 50-year period is likely to remember the iconic plastic masks and vinyl smocks that were adorned by kids all over the country on Halloween every year. Other companies made costumes like these, but it seems like the Ben Cooper costumes have endured the most when it comes to collectors. Mine in particular is of, who else? Gumby. Ben Cooper sold the Gumby costume for years, but I'm assuming mine is from the 70s due to the groovy packaging. But I've been wrong before. And to tell you the truth, I don't care. I bought it solely based on it being Gumby, as I have no nostalgic love for these shitty old costumes. Even as a kid, I knew they were no good. Even fabric ones like this. Put it on and you don't look like Gumby. You look like an asshole. Gumby, to my knowledge, doesn't wear a t-shirt with him and Pokey on it and the big Gumby logo emblazoned across the front. I will admit the mask is kind of cool, but at the end of the day, I'm glad more true-to-character costumes were produced. And I'm glad to own it, as the packaging is super cool, and it's not like my fat ass is going to fit into it. 
Due to societal changes and costumes transitioning away from the cheap plastic mask and smock combo to more expensive costumes made from fabric that look closer to the licensed source material, Ben Cooper Inc. went bust in the early 90s and was bought out by Ruby's Costumes, which still exists to this day. And finally, finally, we come down to this. It's Gumby. He's from 1965 by Lakeside number 8101. The Superflex. He bends, twists, sits, stands, hangs on. He's the perfect pal. Washable, non-toxic. Watch out for the adventures of Gumby on television, of all things. Um, and they have the little pictures of Gumby along the side here. The logo displayed in a little tag um, that's barely just hanging on. It says $1. One dollar is what he cost back in the day. He didn't cost me a dollar, I'll tell you that much. But um, what we're gonna do is what I've been dying to do this whole, it's ever since I got him, ever since he came in the mail. The day he came in the mail, I wanted to just rip it apart and, and open it up and see what he looks like on the inside. But I didn't do it, I waited. I've waited, I've had him displayed in front of me at my desk every day, just looking at this, longing, just wondering what will it be like when I finally open this up. But let's take a little bit more time to see inside here, um, he's got little marks on him. It might have a little bit of mold. Um, there might be little cracks here and there um, where air has gotten in. Um, looks like uh, there's, a, there's a little bit of space there on the, uh, on the, on the card, on the, on the bubble, um, where it may have come up from the, uh, from the, the card back in the day so it looks like maybe some of the elements have gotten inside but other than that it seems like he is a brand new fucking gumby figure so without any further ado let's um let's let's get rid of this ugly thing go away go away punch hole punch hole 53 year old 50 freaking eight year old how however much that is it's 50 56 56 years i don't know it's old it's over 50 years old and I just punched out the punch hole, and now we're gonna rip it open. Here we go! Ugh. And there you have it. It is a 1965 Lakeside Gumby. Oh my God, he's so soft and rubbery. I love this thing. I love this thing. He's a little marked up. Um, there's there's some, the, the packaging is kind of falling apart over the years, over the over 50 years he's sat in there. Um, so he, he doesn't look perfect, um, but that's fine. I'm completely fine with that because he is brand new. Um, it looks like we've got a little bit of, a little bit of molding, a little bit of something going on inside the box over the years. Um, I might have to keep him, uh, keep him uh, uh, maybe in a plastic bag or something, or, or maybe clean him off. He is washable if you remember. So maybe the cardboard box, maybe at one point it got wet, maybe something like that happened. And we got some uh, air into the, into the packaging with him, but he still is soft and flexible and his arms aren't broken. Oh my God, he's beautiful! I love him! He's from 1965 by Lakeside and he's Gumby! Happy Memorial Day, everybody! Well, that's it for this Gumby episode. Tell us what you think in the comments down below. That's a lot of fucking Gumby. It sure as shit is, Jess. Well, goddamn. Well, that's all for now, assholes! Razz Holly, hit the motherfucking music!